Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much again for joining us. Uh, today, we have another of the Spark Investor Webinars, and uh, where we're showcasing, showcasing four excellent companies uh, today. So uh, time is of the essence with the four of them uh, live uh, uh, on the on the webinar. So uh, I'd like I'll just uh, start getting through to get through to them. They'll each have about ten or uh, twelve or thirteen minutes to present. And uh, if there's time after that, we'll uh, ask a, a question or two from them, but we won't have the usual uh, plethora of uh, questions afterwards. So so what we will do is uh, if you want to write or ask a question, we'll please put it into the Q&A box and we will pose it to the to the uh, to the um, uh, the companies after the webinar and we'll get them to answer offline and we'll send that out to everybody afterwards as well. So uh, so please do that and, and very much encourage you to do that so that you can actually uh, get your query uh, answered. So um, so, yes. Yeah, so without further ado, perhaps I can get uh, Catherine to um, uh, 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 open her camera and uh, I see she's already started her uh, presentation there. Catherine, are you uh, are you there? There you are. Catherine, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, please, let's get started with our uh, presentation Thanks today. So I'll leave it over. Oh, before I do that, I, I need to introduce you. So that, this is Dr. Catherine Caulfield from Overgen. Overgen has built a world, world first innovative disruptive technology to develop and produce germ free eggs, which are an integral part of vaccine production. The business has a very large estate of patentable intellectual property. And Catherine leads a very highly qualified team, which is, comprises over 100 years of life science R&D experience. Um, there's already been 19 million uh, invested into the business so far. And it's also backed by the very prestigious EIC fund from Europe. But one of the most important factors is that Catherine and her team have already scaled the previous business and then generated a 68x return for investors in that business. So she and her, she and her team have great experiences in growing and exiting businesses. So Catherine, you're very welcome. So please, if you'd like to start, please do. Catherine, can you hear us? Catherine, you've frozen on us. Are you there? Catherine. Hello. Martin, are you there? Catherine. Lost the sound, yeah. You're, you're back. You're back. Yeah, it is it, it's telling me that the connection is uh, weak, but it has just come back. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. OK, off you go. OK, thank you ever so much. And thanks, Chris, for that kind introduction and good afternoon to everyone. So my name is Dr. Catherine Caulfield. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Overgen and uh, former CEO of Charles River Laboratories Ireland. I have extensive experience in the life sciences industry, in startup as well as multinational, and have successfully exited a contract research organization to a multinational. I have a degree in microbiology, a PhD in pharmacology, and an MBA. So Overgen is an innovation-based an innovation biotechnology company led by uh, experienced entrepreneurs. We plan to revolutionize the way egg-based vaccines are produced by providing a superior product which will benefit society globally. We've successfully produced the world's first germ-free eggs. This is a major milestone achievement for Overgen and it lays the foundation for the next exciting stage of our development. The world has changed fundamentally over the last three years. Not only has COVID-19 created enormous demand for a vaccine, it has significantly increased the need and demand for all vaccines. So vaccine technology is now a hot topic. Our vision is to be a global leader dominating the germ-free egg market with a multi-million profitable business in five years time. Over 82% of the world's influenza vaccines are produced in eggs as their powerful bioreactors. In fact, over 1 billion fertile chicken eggs are used annually in vaccine manufacture. The current benchmark specific pathogen-free eggs result in 30% vaccine batch failure due to internal contamination. Failure results in entire batches being destroyed, 
delaying vaccine release to market and costing millions of euro per annum. It only takes one contaminated egg to destroy a batch of vaccines, resulting in serious cost implications and delays to market. This equates to 480,000 euro loss per batch and to 37 million euro per annum for one vaccine manufacturer whom we spoke with during our extensive market research. The global SPF egg market is expected to grow from $322 million to $480 million by 2027. Ovigen is targeting production of 4 million germ-free eggs by 2029, focused on the premium end of the market in human and animal health and cutting-edge oncology vaccines. This level of production would generate revenues of 49 million euro with an EBITDA of 33 million euro. Germ-free eggs will transform vaccine production by eliminating bacterial contamination and reducing antimicrobial resistance, a holy grail for vaccines. By increasing the yield of vaccines per egg, increasing quality, security, and sustainability, reducing carbon footprint, and allowing more efficient and cost-effective production of vaccines, therefore improving access for poorer nations. We have supplied the world's first germ-free eggs to our first adopter companies. Our target customers include human and animal health vaccine manufacturers, immunotherapy biotech, CDMOs and CROs. Ovigen's initial addressable market is 70 million SPF eggs worth $480 million by 2027. Existing exciting results have been obtained from initial vaccine manufacturer evaluations by a global animal health vaccine uh, manufacturer. Evaluation trials have confirmed the germ-free status of Ovigen's eggs when tested at the manufacturer's site. And germ-free eggs achieved a significantly higher mean result in a virus neutralization batch release test when compared with one of the main suppliers of SPF eggs. Results from the first comparative viral yield study using H1N1 influenza strain performed at the Perbright Institute UK show that Ovigen germ-free eggs supported replication of avian influenza virus with yields up to twofold higher than the two main suppliers of SPF eggs. The implications of these results for vaccine manufacturers and for Ovigen are very significant. Our initial commercial offering will be 100% direct sales to approximately 20 customers. Just checking to see is the sound okay? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Catherine. Our initial commercial offering will be 100% direct sales to approximately 20 customers. There is exceptional strong market pull for our product as evidenced by the pipeline of global customers we have already engaged. Looks as if we might have... Oh, Catherine, you're back again. You're on mute though. You're on mute, Catherine. Can you hear me? Yes, we can again. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Catherine. Can you hear me, Chris? Yes, we can, Catherine, yes. Hello. We can, can hear you, you Catherine. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Was it okay as far as this slide? Yes. Okay. So I'll just start with this slide again. Is that okay? Yes. Our initial, our, okay, our initial commercial offering will be 100% direct sales to approximately 20 customers. 
There is exceptional and strong market pull for our product as evidenced by the pipeline of global customers we have already engaged with. So Origin plans to scale up production of germ-free eggs to 4 million on the Irish site. And thereafter, expansion will be via satellite facilities placed close to large vaccine manufacturers globally. So now I will speak about the, the team. We have a highly experienced core team in place with a strong track record and key world-class skills. Many of us have worked successfully together for a long time, which will allow us to move rapidly and maximize this opportunity. We have prior experience of setting up and scaling a contract research organization, employing 220 people. When we exited successfully, this gave a 68 times return to investors, many of whom were our team members. I've already introduced myself. Dr. Leonard Morin is the chairman and co-founder of Ovigen and is a world expert in germ-free technology. Dr. Martin Murphy is a veterinarian and manages the various projects in Ovigen. Prior to joining Ovigen, Martin held senior director positions with Novartis and Atlanco in Switzerland, and prior to that, Charles River Laboratories in Ireland. We also have two very experienced non-executive directors on our board, and a consultant who are actively involved in the strategic direction of our business. They each have 30 plus years experience in international markets, strategy and corporate development. Over 19 million euro has been invested in the project to date with almost 4 million of promoter funds. And I'm pleased to advise that Obergen was awarded 10 million euro of blended finance from the European Innovation Council Accelerator Fund in a recent funding round. This comprised of 2.5 million in grant and 7.5 million in equity investment for which a term sheet has been signed. The 7.5 million EIC award needs to be matched by 7.5 million in co-investment. As you are aware, the EIC application is a highly competitive process and this award is a major validation of the Overgen business. So Overgen plans to draw down 2.5 million euro of EIC funds and to match it with 2.5 million in co-investment in this current Series A funding round. We're projecting revenues of 49 million euro with an EBITDA of 33.5 million euro by 2029. Two competitors, namely AVS Bio and Valo Biomedia have a duopoly in the global egg market space. Germ-free eggs will not only carve out a clearly defined niche in this growing market, but will shape, disrupt, and develop the market. The company is raising 5 million euro, euro of equity funding in this Series A funding round at a pre-money valuation of 25 million euro. It is envisioned that equity investors in this round would be able to achieve a 7x return on investment by 2028. This is an attractive proposition financially. Management expect this a trade sale to take place with a significant global life sciences player within five years. So to conclude, the World Health Organization have stated many times that nobody is vaccinated until everybody is vaccinated. Here is an opportunity to invest in an innovative and disruptive project that will do good and well for society's health. I thank you for your time and attention and welcome any questions you may have. Catherine, thank you very much indeed. That was uh, brilliant, and sorry about the uh, little uh, uh, upset in the uh, in the signal, but uh, that that was very good. Rather than actually answer, ask the questions now or answer the questions now, I, I'd still in, uh, would like everybody to uh, add in their questions into the Q and A, and we will answer them offline. And I see a number of them are there already, which is uh, which is great. So, Catherine, thank you very much indeed. Perhaps you can uh, unshare yeah. what you have and uh, switch off your camera. Fergal, you're not required at the moment. Thank you very much, and we'll go straight into uh, Jamie from YBI. So, Jamie, if you'd like to switch your camera on, please. Thank you very much. So Jamie is the founder and CEO of uh, YBuy. Um, now we all have them. These are items in our sheds that uh, that we just use once a year or very, very infrequently. 
And Jamie has uh, developed a platform that uh, kind of can eliminate these expensive items, and you can hire them uh, from direct from the uh, from uh, the the, plat the Y by platform. It's not a peer to peer platform that Jamie has constructed, but a direct to, direct to uh, consumer where uh, Y by has a, a whole host of things that we would like, and uh, and has a facility by which to de deliver them out uh, with a white glove service out to the uh, to the to the people who want them. So the platform is uh, is live in London and is, is going to be expanding rapidly over to a lot of other UK sites in, in, in uh, over 2024. It's an approved company for SEIS and EIS. So if you have a tax exposure in the UK, then you can avail of some of the tax benefits from, from that as well. But Jamie, I'll leave it to you now to explain a little bit more and away you go. And thanks very much. Thank you very much, Chris. I hope you can all hear me clearly and thank you for your time today, folks. Essentially, um, Chris is actually doing a better intro than I usually do, but I would start off from the point of view of how much stuff do you own that you rarely use? And in terms of if you think of your garden shed, if you think of your attic, if you think of the stuff that is kept under your stairs, how often do you go and use that carpet cleaner you bought and used and then parked away for a very uh, long period of time? Most of us here are old enough to remember when we had shelves of DVDs and CDs. Spotify and Netflix came along and said, live an on-demand lifestyle. Don't have all these CDs, don't have all these uh, DVDs. We'll save you money, we'll save you space, and ultimately, we're going to give you more choice as well. And that's essentially what we do with uh, YBuy. So YBuy is a platform that allows you to hire uh, and access items on demand for the length of time you want them. So it eliminates the cost of purchasing, it eliminates the hassle of uh, ownership, and it el eliminates the need uh, for storage. The platform is basically fully developed for both mobile app and website. And essentially, if you've ever ordered a burger online on any of the food delivery apps, you already know how to use this. You can go in, you can browse for the items that you need, see the prices, and then start selecting what you want. The system is quite smart. It knows what similar customers have ordered, and it knows people who've ordered X are very likely to order Y. So you can go in. The app has all of the uh, instruction manuals, the setup guides, and everything in there. It has QR codes on all of our paperwork as well if you want to look up videos for how things work. And you can go in. You can select the day you want it delivered, the hour slot you want it delivered, and then what day and what time do you want to return it system generates a price, suggests, are you sure you don't want this, this, or this based on other customers' behavior? And then what we do is we just go through a very straightforward uh, checkout process. It's important to note, by the way, none of this is accelerated what you're seeing on screen at the moment. It's actually a very, very fast platform that we've built ourselves. So within a few seconds, people are able to order for the event that they need uh, the items for, and they're able to get everything organized and done in one clean motion. A few seconds later, an email is there, and we have um, had a very, very positive feedback from the customers who have used it. That's what the app looks like. Obviously, we also have a mobile and uh, desktop-enabled website as well, and that's um, coming up on your screen now. You can see the browsing experience there. Again, the UX is very easy to use. In terms of the KPIs of uh, how we performed when we were running in London, we have over 2,000 customers already registered. Our acquisition cost per customer is £20 and falling, and our average order value is more than £68 gross. So in terms of a return on marketing, it's about 2.7 times uh, we're getting as a return on marketing. And what we want to do now is we want to start thinking about expansion. So in terms of expansion, the two main territories, territories that we want to uh, start expanding across are the UK and Germany. So in terms of um, timing on this, we want to get London uh, funding a lot of these operations and allowing us to expand across all of these territories in the UK, Germany and in Dublin by the end of 2026. Uh, it's a highly cash generative business, which we believe for incoming investors, it means a minimal level of dilution. We would need 3.5 million to do this across the UK and Germany. And we believe that we can do that 
uh, quite uh, a lot of this by debt financing. We expect our annual revenues to be more than 15 million by the end of 2027 and an EBITDA of over 8 million in 2028. As I said, it's quite a cash generative business. In terms of the people who are involved in the business, there is myself who has a track record in media originally, my colleague Dennis, who uh, founded the business with me, who is in charge of logistics and ops. And then as board advisors, we have uh, Greg Lawless, who some of you may know, he exited Arena PLC, one of the largest uh, rental companies in uh, the UK uh, in 2021. And also we have Tim Taylor, who is the current CFO of Live Golf, who have just completed the, uh, they're just completing the takeover of the PGA. Uh, so in terms of the corporate information on this, I'm aware that compared to some of the other propositions we're looking at today, uh, this is a um, straightforward one. So I'd love to be able to jump to Q&A quite quickly. But in terms of what the corporate position is, is this is a platform that is fully developed and ready to deploy. And we will be revenue generating within four weeks of completing uh, this funding round. Uh, our logistics, our warehousing, our staffing, existing co customers, these are all in place. We have an amazing partnership with one of the largest flower distribution companies in London who are helping us expand across the UK. And that takes care of all of our logistics and warehousing needs. And in terms of the raise we are doing, we are raising 400,000 euro for 17.5% of the business. It's a single class of share. There are no convertible loan notes. There's no debt in the business. There's only one um, class of share in the business. And as Chris mentioned, there is EIS and SEIS uh, tax relief available for UK uh, based investors. In terms of the funding for uh, usage, it is entirely for operations and marketing. The company has zero debt. Our peak funding required is under 350,000 sterling, and we are cash flow positive within nine months. So we see this business as commercialized, we see it as de-risked, and we see it as revenue uh, ready. In terms of the key metrics, I'll just uh, reiterate, we have an average gross order of 68 pounds, a cost of acquiring those customers of 20 pounds. We're revenue generating within uh, four weeks, and we believe that future rounds are going to be uh, very low, uh, very, are going to minimize dilution risk to incoming investors. So I'm aware of the fact that there are probably, in my experience, there's been a lot of questions on the model and uh, what we've done in the past. So um, Chris, if it's possible, uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to take questions now, but it might be helpful. Sorry, yes, absolutely, Jamie, no worries at all. We can, there's a, there's a number of questions in already. Uh, first one, um, what is the what are the next what is the next city that you're going to go to and uh, and the, and how are you going to roll it out to the others in the uk yep so basically um the uh next city we would go to is birmingham and birmingham is uh, just in terms of density of households and in terms of the analytics it's also why we're uh, we chose germany as the first um uh, country to expand into after the uk and ireland uh, when you do the analysis, it's to do with density, and I think the uh, Birmingham is the logical one. After that, it will be Liverpool and Manchester combined. What we normally do is we take orders at least 24 to 48 hours in advance. We can control all of this in our platform, of course. And what we can actually do is we can operate everything out of one warehouse between, say, Liverpool and Birmingham, or, for example, Glasgow and Edinburgh, or uh, Bristol and Cardiff, for example. So we've mapped out all of these things, how you would do it. And we have had the uh, business plan as verified with the real data as possible. And the next question is, is follows on from that. And why Germany uh, for the next uh, country? Yeah, so essentially, uh, if you take the analytics of who has used the product so far, um, you actually, uh, this is the bit where I kind of contradict myself, because I'm going to tell you that you actually see that the most likely customers to adopt here would be uh, Scandinavia. But in terms of Scandinavia, in the cities you're looking at, the four Scandinavian uh, countries uh, that we did, did the data analysis that we would launch in, we'd end up with four different currencies, four different languages, four different tax regimes. And Germany, one media market, one language, one uh, entity operating there. It's a much cleaner operation. So we've basically taken what is the purchasing habits and rental habits across 
uh, every city in Europe with a population greater than 300,000 people and run that through the mill. And Germany really identifies itself as a single market where we can fly. Very good. Fergal? Excellent. Hi, Jimmy. Um, just yeah. a question for you, double, double part question as well. Uh, is the app up and running? Um, is there a franchise potential? Uh, so the app is up and running. Uh, we got very badly hit during COVID when we were operating. And then I joined up with our partners in Flower Station. And we can, it's basically a case of it's on hiatus at the moment. And we're going to switch it on very, very quickly and get it going. Is there franchise potential? Absolutely. Um, this is normally comes up and it's normally to do with stock management. It's important to note that the stock is the user experience. And I can't overemphasize how important it is that uh, how seriously we take this. So we basically have three types of stock that we rent. There's uh, third parties, for example, Bouncy Castle companies use us to hire out their stuff. So you have that model. The second one is, is there's high volume stuff that we know people want all the time. That might be tables and chairs, and we either do that ourselves or with a third party. And the third one is, is the stuff that we own ourselves that we manage with a really minimal inventory cost. So if I can give you an example, um, if you went in at Fergal and tried to buy a K2 cart or power washer in Woody's today, it would cost you about €125, Euro, including that. We buy them directly from Karcher for £30 X VAT, uh, and we hire them out for 25 quid a day. And they, 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 are, they are selling to us in the knowledge that we're a hiring company. So which products we hire out is really important to us. We have a minimal inventory in the future. But being able to have the stuff for customers that's ready to churn out really, really fast, we have those relationships with suppliers. And suppliers know that this is the future. This is like the music industry in 2005 saying, no, we want to keep selling CDs. Streaming will never happen. We can see certain companies, including Karcher, um, coming across and already going, yeah, we would prefer to get everybody hiring four times a year than buying once every five years. Hmm. Um, last question uh, before we uh, move on to the next company. Uh, and what is the uh, sorry? Where's it gone? Do, 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 sorry, where's it gone? Um, the uh, how do you guarantee the uh, the integrity of the product uh, going out to the client? So we basically we manage the inventory in house. So we basically have it all priced in and everything. So if you hire a rope doctor off us to clean your carpets, it will arrive and. It will be spotlessly clean. There will be two litres of cleaning fluid with us. If you hire a, a patio heater off us, there will be an extension lead automatically with it that is able to uh, operate at, uh, at, at that level and everything. We take all of that into account. Um, I know this, it's just to follow on there, Albert's question just popped up on my screen. It's even when it comes to insurance, we are product liability, public liability. We have full insurances for everything. These are products that we manage the insurance companies have reviewed everything we do. We pack test our stuff at least three times a year. And as a result, we're very confident when we send the stuff out. We get almost, uh, we have about a 4.8 out of five uh, positivity on um, all of the uh, Trustpilot and app stores, et cetera, who uh, use these systems. Very good. Okay, there's loads more questions here, um, Jamie, but uh, we, we're out of time, but uh, we'll get those on to you and we'll answer those, you'll answer those, uh, and set, we'll send them out to all of the uh, investors uh, after this. But thank you very much for your time and well done. And uh, we'll move on to uh, Therese. Thank you very much, Jamie. Therese, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if I can quickly do an introduction to you. Uh, Therese is Professor Therese Kinsler. Uh, she is the CEO of uh, Ataxa Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Ataxa is a pharma company that is advancing first-in-class drugs for the treatment of a range of heart and lung diseases. Therese leads a very qualified team and has already completed phase one trials and is about to start phase two trials in 2024. A taxa is a, uh, has a large estate of patents already granted, and there's already been 15 million euros worth of, uh, uh, invested into the business over over the time of the business being uh, up and running. It is also uh, a, a, a part of the a party of the uh, EIC accelerator program and has had 10 million uh, euros of non-dilutive grant uh, and equity funding into the business already. 
the, 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 the business is uh, seeking funds and, uh, and, and is giving preference shares with that funding, uh, where each of those shares has an 8% coupon upon exit. So, Therese, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'll let you crack on to your, uh, into your uh, presentation. Thanks very much. Well, firstly, thank you very much, Chris, for that very kind introduction. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Therese. Very nice to meet you all. Uh, Therese Kintz, the founder and CEO of Attax and Therapeutics. So what's Attax? Based in Dublin, Attax is a pharmaceutical company clinically advancing first-in-class proprietary drugs for the treatment of a range of heart and lung diseases. So our lead drug is called NTP42, is viewed by the leading FDA and EMA drug regulators as having the potential to dramatically change the treatment of a condition called pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. So what is PAH? PAH is a devastating life-threatening disease of the lungs and heart. Up to 500,000 people globally suffer from the condition, but without treatment, average, uh, on average, patients die within three years of heart failure. But survival can be extended to five to seven years if the patient adheres to a cocktail of existing approved pH drugs. The problem with these drugs is that they only treat one aspect of the disease, that is the narrowing of blood vessels in the lungs, but they do not treat the right heart failure, which is, of course, the ultimate cause of early death in patients. Also, they carry very severe side effects and are badly tolerated, further adding to the very, very poor clinical outcomes. So there really is an urgent unmet medical need for radically new and better treatments for this really dreadful, um, devastating disease. So what is the solution? Now, it's actually a lead drug, NTP42, directly inhibits a key driver of PAH called the thromboxane receptor which is actually at the root cause of the disease, including its symptoms and progression in both the heart and lungs. So this unique ability of NTP42 to block pH disease progression in both affected organs suggests that it could be the radical disease-modifying therapy that is just much needed today. But this is not just solely for pH, but also for many much more widespread heart and lung diseases. So to put this more simply, NTP42 could become the standard of care therapy of choice for use by the doctors for treating these disease, diseases, preventing their progression and greatly prolonging patient lives, which of course is the ultimate objective. So what's the actual target um, area and the market opportunity? So if we take PAH as an example, because of NTP42's first-in-class and orphan drug status granted by the EMA and FDA, the total addressable market is, in fact, the entire global spend on PAH. So what value was that? In 2022, the, P, the global PAH market was valued at 7.3 billion US dollars and will grow to 9.5 billion by 2027. Now, if we assume an annual NTP42 price of $45,000 per patient per annum, this is still 50% less than the price paid for today's top-selling PAH drugs, which range from 100,000 to 1 million uh, euro dollars per, per annum per patient. This competitive pricing is key to ensuring NTP42's market adoption post uh, after its launch at the market. Also, with estimates of between 300 and 500,000 patients, 500, patients globally in 2017, and assuming all patients are treated, this further increases the total addressable market opportunity to between $13 billion and $23 billion. In terms of our traction and validation, as Chris mentioned, up to 15 million euro has been invested in a taxa since 2019 with Enterprise Ireland, the very prestigious EU uh, Horizon and indeed EIC accelerator programmes alone, providing 10 million euro of grant and equity funding. As Chris also mentioned, Ataxa has a very valuable and growing global patents estate with already 15 granted patents protecting NTP42 and our related drugs in major markets throughout the world uh, out to 2036, and then combined with the EMA and FDA's orphan drug status, further offering extended protection from competition. 
critically, HD42 has already been successfully tested in a phase one clinical trial in healthy male volunteers, where it was confirmed as safe, well tolerated, and only needs to be taken once daily at low doses for clinical effect. These achievements have um, uh, and supports have prompted several world-class business partners in the clinical development industry to come on board in the move to bring a taxi, taxis drug into phase two clinical trials, which is of course our next mission or goal. So speaking of milestones, uh, as mentioned today, a taxi is in a clinical development company, but we are now we have now already successfully completed the phase one clinical trials. So now we must get ready for the phase two clinical trials in the PH patient. So thankfully, the preparations are well underway. Already scaled up manufacture of NTP42 has passed all quality certifications, so the, the, the drug is banked. Oral formulations of the drug, both as a dry powder and capsule, is at completion. The long-term toxicology studies is well underway. And then a bridging clinical trial in healthy volunteers will be conducted uh, later this month through, through December of this year at the Hammersmith Medical Research, who ran Texas very successful phase one clinical trial. And then with regulatory clearance from the EMA and FDA, we are ready to start the phase two clinical trial in PH patients in late 2024, with its expected completion in 2026, the point where in which attacks will likely exit the market. So in terms of our competition, the major competitors are, are, uh, are also our potential acquirers. So they are the major companies such, uh, that in the PH, active in PH treatment today. They are Johnson & Johnson, j, j Merck, GSK, and United Therapeutics. Other competitors include clinical development companies testing new therapies in PH or in other heart and lung diseases. In terms of our team, uh, I, uh, as a founder and CEO, am a leading expert in disease mechanisms with over 100 scientific publications. I am the lead inventor in each of the taxes, 15 granted patents and others at Guinness uh, and at UCD. I was awarded the Royal Irish Academy and Biochemical Society gold medals, and I'm an elected member of the Royal Irish Academy. Of course, as CEO, I'm supported by a highly experienced and dedicated team, including Dr. Helen Reed, Program and Operations Manager, Gillian Lynch, Finance Manager, Drs. Eamon Mulvaney, Senior Scientist, and Elizabeth Eng, Senior Scientist, as well as by a global team of clinical drug development and regulatory pharma expert advisors. Of course, a taxes board of directors bring extensive business acumen to the company, not in, in both in product commercialization, in clinical development, company strategy, finance, and venturing. At Forest Labs, for example, our chairman, Jeremy Burke, built a multi billion dollar pharma business prior to uh, a forest acquisition. Similarly, Drs. Daniel Omani and Jonathan Langley bring invaluable corporate business venture and clinical management skills. So combined, the team, uh, board and advisors have the in-depth knowledge of all aspects of PH. This is greatly helped by being active in the field for greater than 25 years with proven expertise in all relevant areas, as well as having the vital contacts and networking at key scientific, clinical and business meetings and conference attending. Tenants. In terms of our finances, as we mentioned, already circa 15 million euros has been invested in a tax since 2019 through equity low, convertible loan notes or non dilutive grant funding. The promoters in this, the promoters, including the founder and senior management, have invested substantially in equity and through the loan notes. Enterprise Ireland have already invested in grant, equity and loan notes, funds to the amount to the value of almost $1.6 million. Euros, Euros, excuse me. A taxi uh, uh, is entirely EAAS um, eligible, where Spark investors can avail of a 40% tax incentive. And uniquely, um, as well as when getting uh, shares in a tax in this investment round, you not only get equity, but also these Series A shares carry an 8% annual interest that accrues annually and is paid out to a tax at company exit. 
in terms of our, our, our investment. We are targeting a 500,000 euro equity capital through, as I mentioned, Series A shares from Spark investors. Already 4.5 million in grant and equity has been committed to this funding round from leading institutional investors. As an EWS uh, eligible company, the investor can avail of a venture capital investment at a 40% discount to those uh, paid by professional investors. Along with the equity, as I mentioned, the Series A shares have the added advantage and they carry an 8% annual interest coupon paid out at exit. The pre-money evaluation on a tax is 40 million, but successful completion of a tax is phase two clinical trial in PEH patients to begin in 2024 would trigger at least a 10 to 20 fold uplift in the current company valuation. So in terms of a taxes exit strategy, there are two possible routes for taxes to exit, as I mentioned, to, uh, after the phase two clinical trial. They are the merger and acquisition, or M&A, or indeed a licensing deal. So in the merger and acquisition, where a tax is acquired after completion of the phase two clinical trial in PH patients by one of the major four pharma companies in PH, who are, of course, as I mentioned, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, GSK, or United Therapeutics, or indeed by other more specialist pharma. So combine the four key pharma here, um, players here command more than 90% of the drug sales in PH, sharing the profits of today's global market, which I mentioned is valued at 7.3 billion in 2022 uh, and growing annually with a growth rate of 55%. And where much higher reimbursement and growth rates are actually uh, uh, commanded for innovative drugs that are new to the market, such as for attack as entity 42. In the licensing deal, where a tax uh, out license entity 42 after the phase two clinical trial to one of these four key global pay, pay, players, or indeed a specialist uh, pharma companies, each of which have existing sales force in, ex in key markets across Europe, North America, and Asia. A licensing deal would, of course, return to the investor and indeed to the company an upfront pay payment followed by a milestone and royalties linked to NTP42 uh, sales. So why invest in a tax? We are a highly qualified industry leading management team with global franchise building expertise. Our mission and development milestones have been validated by multi-million euro investments and achievements. The FDA and EMA regulation have endorsed us by granting us orphan drug status. We already have a significant, valuable and growing global practice state. Uniquely, the drug treats both the heart and lungs in patients and has huge potential to treat other block Buster diseases um, uh, to tax and reaping rewards to its investors. The existing market opportunity for PH alone is worth as much as 9.5 billion by 2027. Uh, Spark investors buy into the opportunity to 40% discount thanks to EWIS eligibility, as well as the equity the Series A shares carry an 8% annual interest that is paid out as exit. Thank you for listening. Further information can be obtained through the Ataxa or indeed Spark crowdfunding websites. Thank you very much indeed, Therese. That was uh, very well done. And uh, you got through uh, just in time, which is brilliant. Um, there's a there's a couple of questions that have, well, a number of questions that have come in, but I'll just ask one. What is the expected timeline to launch on the marketplace and what competition exists in the PAH uh, drug trials? Uh, First of all, in, to address the actual when we get to the market. So after uh, the phase two clinical trial, the phase three clinical trial is required. A taxi would not be responsible for running that. The actual new acquirer, we hope to exit after the phase two clinical trial, uh, where which, which the phase two will realize a huge value. This is where the, is the proof of concept in the patients. Does the drug work? So it will be up to the large acquirer to run that. We expect it would launch in the market then, Chris, uh, early in 2028. Uh, the competition, because of a tax's unique ability to treat the heart and lung, we are not scared by the competition because this is what's needed in the market, not just for PAH, but for much more widespread P, uh, heart and lung diseases. Remember, 2% of the adult population has a heart disease. 
that's you and I, we might not know it. And this becomes 5% uh, as we get over 65. Um, it's what most of us are going to die of. So this drug has a really, in, uh, you know, a very novel potential um, in other much more larger opportunities, which is why the large, big players are going to want to acquire it. Very good. And there's a number of other questions, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for them, but we'll answer them offline, as I've said before. So, Therese, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And uh, if I could ask you to stop sharing and we'll get Tamir on. Tamir, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Tamir, good afternoon. Tamir is the CEO of uh, Altec Biomedical. Altec is a spin out from Trinity College uh, and it is developing a portfolio of biometric cartilage scaffolds using type 2 collagen to uh, to to replace the uh, worn out uh, uh, cartilage in people's knees and other joints as well. Tamir is also leading a very uh, qualified, a very qualified uh, team of medical scientists. It's already been backed by uh, by institutional funding from the prestigious NLC Ventures in the Netherlands. Uh, and the small scale animal studies that have been performed, the results of which have already been published in peer reviewed scientific journals and uh, and very much on the way to building uh, a successful business. So, Tamir, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'll see you in uh, 10 or 12 minutes time. Thank you very much, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much for, for giving your time to listen about Altec and our technology today. So my name is Tamir Kosofsky and I'm the CEO of Altac Biomedical based in Dublin, as Chris mentioned, a spin out from Trinity College. Our goal at Altac is to become a gold standard in cartilage repair and the treatment of mild to moderate osteoarthritis. Our cartilage defects are painful, they lower our quality of life and impair our physical activity. But unfortunately, cartilage as a tissue does not possess a natural ability to heal itself, unlike some other tissues. And as of today, there's no real successful treatment in regenerating our native cartilage. Left untreated cartilage defects leads to osteoarthritis, which is one of the leading causes of joint related disabilities today. Hence the big push both from the orthopedic community and the industry for what we call joint preserving treatments. So treatments that preserve our joint and delay the onset of osteoarthritis. But as mentioned, there's no gold standard today. So where we feel that Altax product, our implant, meets a really big unmet need is for patients with these larger cartilage defects that are beginning to progress into mild and moderate osteoarthritis. There is a need for an implantable surgical solution that's natural and provides regeneration of the cartilage in a way that can delay the need for a partial or total knee replacement and push it down the line. To give you a bit more idea and visualize what the product looks like, I'll play a short 50 second animation. So as shown on the animation, our product is a collagen scaffold developed at Trinity College based over 10 years of research. And it has a few unique characteristics. Firstly, the material itself, so the aforementioned type two collagen. So it'll be the first scaffold on the market made out of this material. And it's relevant because type two collagen is what our healthy cartilage is made of. And it provides a better environment for cells to infiltrate into the scaffold and in turn create new healthy cartilage. The product can be implanted using a single stage procedure, meaning we require one operation. And the scaffold itself is optimized in terms of its structure to maximize cellular infiltration. 
And the results of this are a repair that regenerates our cartilage to provide hyaline-like or native-like cartilage. And we've proven this in an animal model. So we have multiple peer-reviewed and published papers that showcase the efficacy of our type 2 collagen and its hondro-inductive nature. And what we see from these papers and these results is that the cartilage that we're regenerating has the right properties, the right biomechanical properties and markers, and mimics our native cartilage, which is what you want to see in this type of product. In terms of our intellectual property, it's protected by a patent. The patent pertains to the actual methodology of manufacturing type 2 collagen into a mechanically robust scaffold. And we're looking to file additional patents as we go through the final stages of the development cycle. In terms of the market opportunity, the total market forecast for cartilage repair is forecasted to be 4.9 billion in 2027, of which 2.5 are surgical procedures. Now we feel that Altax technology can address approximately 80% of those procedures and a 20% targeted market penetration rate gives us a sum of 400 million. In terms of our competitors, we feel we offer a few key advantages. Firstly, it's surgical technique. I mentioned before that it's arthroscopic. What we mean by that is that it's minimally invasive, which means that it carries a number of benefits such as lowered infection risk and quicker rehabilitation. The material itself, so as mentioned, will be the first type two collagen scaffold on the market. And the product's flexibility, both in the sense that it can be used standalone as a therapeutic procedure, but it can also be combined with other therapies such as PRP, stem cells, or bone marrow aspirate. And also in terms of its indications, our technology can be used both for smaller defects, which we call chondral defects, and also for larger lesions called osteochondral defects. In terms of our product portfolio, we're currently developing two products and we'll be launching them one by one. We'll be beginning with the osteochondral implant, as we feel as these larger lesions this implant addresses is where the largest unmet need is in the market today. In terms of the team, the core of the team is our inventing team at Trinity College. So we have Professor Daniel Kelly, who's the Chair of Tissue Engineering at Trinity, Professor Connor Buckley, the Head of Trinity Center for Biomedical Engineering, and Dr. David Brow, who's a PhD, at Trinity. This is supported by Taco van der Veltz, a strategic advisor from NLC, and myself, Tamir Kosofsky. I've been involved in orthopedics my entire career, primarily in the business development and sales space, with a focus on early stage orthopedic companies and bringing products to the market, primarily knee related products, so total knee replacements, synthetic ligaments, cartilage products, and so on. We're also working with a key opinion leader, Dr. Konrad Swinarski. He's one of Europe's leading joint preservation surgeons and cartilage repair specialists. And he also has a lot of experience in product development and he'll be helping us develop our instrumentation for the surgical technique, as well as help with the design of the clinical trials moving forward. Obviously a project like this requires partners and here are, are a few of them. So Trinity College, we are continuing to collaborate with Trinity on R&D, but also primarily in the form of non-dilutive grant opportunities that we are applying for as a consortium with Trinity College. Secondly, Pro Pharma Group is our chosen regulatory advisor due to their experience with class three devices, which our product is. And finally, HCM Medical, they're our company specializing in the manufacturing of collagen-based medical products and they will be our primary R&D and future contract manufacturing partner. So in terms of the regulatory pathway and the timeline, our product currently is at the preclinical product development stage, and we are working towards our first milestone, which is a design lock or design freeze on the product. This will allow us to transition to the next phase, which is the verification and validations phase, where the necessary biocompatibility and viral and activation studies will take place and will culminate with a larger scale animal trial. This will lead us to our final step before market approval, which is a human trial, which is forecasted to last for two years, with a group of 240 patients. 
and hopefully following a successful human trial, we'll be able to launch the product in 2028-29. In terms of this round, we are looking for 950,000 euro to reach the initial milestone mentioned, which is a design lock or design freeze, which we're looking to reach in approximately 18 months. The majority of this round will be spent on the R&D costs and initial key hires, such as a QARA director and a CTO, which will be one of the founders, David Brow. And as of, as of this round, we have 650,000 euro pledged. So we're looking for 300,000 euro through this crowdfunding initiative. And we are EIIS eligible, which means that 40% of your investment will be discounted. In terms of exit potential, the obvious opportunity for Altac is an acquisition by the leading OEMs, primarily US-based companies such as Stryker, Zimmer Biomet, Conmed, or Arthrex. As of today, there is still no collagen scaffold approved on the market for large osteochondral defects in the US. And that is where we see our opportunity. To give you an idea of similar exits in this space, um, Israeli company Cartihil, which developed an osteochondral implant made out of a different material, uh, was acquired by BioVentus two years ago for 500 million. And BioRes, a US company, was acquired for 246 million by Conmed, also using a collagen scaffold for a slightly different indication. Now, what's interesting about both these acquisitions, they both took place the moment FDA approval was granted. So that's why we're positioning ourselves for Altec as well, is that exit opportunity will arise once we gain market approval in key areas. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. Brilliant. Oops. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Tamir. Um, listen, I, I don't think we've got any time, unfortunately, for questions, but the, there's loads that, that have come into the uh, into the Q and A. So we'll, as I said before, we'll get those answered offline, and uh, we can uh, uh, do that. So thank you very much indeed. So listen, we've, we've thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, Tamir. Uh, so guys, we've we've heard from all four businesses today, and uh, I think you'll agree they're again worth some serious in, uh, serious consideration for investment. Uh, some really high quality uh, businesses there that we're that are either live or about to go live and and all three that are not actually live yet will be going live very very shortly so if you'd like, like to have a follow-on call with any of them please let us know we'll be happy to implement uh, to to, uh, to to facilitate that of course as we've always done uh, and uh, and you can kind of speak to them directly uh, if you've got any uh, other questions but uh listen the the q a is still there so if you'd like to add a question in please do so very quickly uh, but otherwise, I think that's very much it for today. And I really appreciate you uh, joining us and listening to the presentations that we've had. Um, and uh, as as the, uh, the guys have said, uh, many of them are e e -I -S, uh, in, uh, um eligible, and which means that you can get EIS 40% uh, back from your investment as well. So thank you very much indeed. And we will see you again in our next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.